Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is October 17th, 2023, and we've got a giant pile of new knives to talk about, including a wiener. Let's talk knives. First knife on the table, as mentioned a moment ago, is the Boker Kalashnikov Wiener Warrior. So the story with this one is we made the Dessert Warrior a long time ago and it was a good time. And then for April Fool's Day 2022, I believe, we did this thing, we called it the Warrior Buffet, where we made a bunch of mock-ups of silly Kalashnikovs. And we're like, yeah, we're getting in the restaurant biz. You can get all your favorite Kalashnikov auto food themed. And everybody's like, we gotta get that hot dog. And the Wiener Warrior is what came of it. And it has finally arrived. It's got the solid aluminum handles that you're used to on the Kalashnikov, a D2 blade with a unique blade shape with a bit of a sweep and the little mustardy squiggle. It's a lot of fun. You can't complain about it. it goes for $70, 7.625 inches overall, and the 3.25 inch blade. Just standard Kalashnikov size, standard Kalashnikov there, but probably the most fun of all the Kalashnikovs. I still want to do the Dessert Warrior hot dog wiener warrior mix up and call it the state fair edition where it's the donut handle with the hot dog blade. That'd be so fun. I might have to do that on my own time though. Next knife on the table is we have the Top Knives Tack Raise 6. So this is a friction folder and friction folders I, I think are reserved mostly for the, the razors, the straight, ra straight razors in today's market. They do have their place. They don't lock so they're basically legal everywhere, but they, are sort of a icon of a very distant past. The first folders ever made by humans were friction folders, but Topps decided to take the friction folder tactical with the tack rays. So you have this recurved Tanto blade. It's gonna give you great piercing power, great cutting power, and a nice micarta handle, holds nice and well, and uh, an extra long tang here on the back. So if you're holding this and you're going in, that blade's not really going anywhere. And even if it does, it has a great big finger choil here that will pass. It takes a lot of movement for that thing to hurt your finger. So very well done Topps knives. Made in the USA, 1095 blade, micarta handle, and this very nice leather sheath because Topps always will do a good job on their leather. So this has a 3.25 inch blade and it's 7.625 inches overall, USA made, and it's coming for a great deal of $84.95. Very nicely done tops. Next up from Carbon Knives, we have the Beatnik. So we talked about Carbon Knives a few weeks ago. It's a company that's running pretty much exclusively Ken Onion designs. And this one, I think is more of the budget friendly variety. It goes for 164 with a 14C28N blade and an aluminum handle. 3.25 inches on the blade, 7.5 inches overall. And what I like about this is it has the feel and look of maybe a traditional Barlow knife, maybe a bit longer stretched out, sort of maybe Barlow Trapper-esque, but you got your pocket clip, your liner lock, aluminum handles. And I'm really intrigued by the way he did the tang on this one because it's very squared off and like it doesn't have a detent here, but it almost has a half stop like you'd expect a traditional to have. So I, I like how it's modern and slick and fast like a Ken Onion design is always going to be, but it definitely has a lot of nods to the old school knives. But I think that the nods are very tasteful. Sometimes the nods get a little too naughty and then naughty, N-O-D-D-Y, nod E of or pertaining to a nod. I know how to speak languages. Um, but yeah, they, they lean a little too far into the traditional side for my taste, but this one definitely feels like a modern folder with a bit of the look of that traditional, which I really appreciate. Very nicely done carbon knives. Next up from Microtech, we have the Combat Troodon Hellhound Razor. So you guys know the Combat Troodon. I found out that the Troodon was a dinosaur, but like emphasis on the extra was, like a double was. So once upon a time, somebody found a tooth that didn't match any known dinosaur species. And they're like, this is a new thing. We're gonna call it Troodon. And Troodon is Greek, roughly translated to wounded tooth. However, in 2017, after a lot more research had been done, they decided that the Troodon was dead. There is no more Troodon classification of a dinosaur. If you have a textbook with Troodon in it, it is out of date. However, this is a real knife. And I think the broken tooth kind of goes well, because I kind of this, this interesting blade shape reminds me about the Hellhound Razor. And like, what an interesting blade shape. I think this is definitely a collector piece. If you're into collecting Microtex, you've got to grab one of these because they are just so different. But one thing I will say is if you look down the, down the barrel of this 
combat throw it on, you'll see that the blade comes very much right near the tip. So you're getting every bit of blade that you can get out of this. So if you're looking for ultimate blade strength and length, I would say this is the combat throw it on for you. And in classic Microtech fashion, USA made, built to the nines, super high end materials, a lot of milling everything. And that comes at a bit of a price. These are going for 762, but what a cool knife. So next up we have the James brand, the Wells. This one's a USA made button lock flipper with an anodized aluminum handle. And it, it definitely feels like another one of those entries into that button lock flipper game that is so big right now. And it feels good. It really does. A very slick action. The blade is magna cut steel, is, is come, once again, awesome, crazy, crazy, awesome. Three inch blade, 7.25 inches overall. So that perfect everyday carry size. And the sheep's foot, I think, really fits the vibe of the James brand for me. The James brand to me feels like the knife of the person who cares a lot about simple but effective design. And they never feel very tactical to me. And this one just feels like the great everyday carry thing. That, that sheep's foot is gonna do an easy job of cutting tape. The action is fidgety and slick. Well built in America, all the way, great knife. These are going for 439, so they're a bit spendy, but they're really good. Check them out at bladehq.com. Next up, keeping with the USA made Magna Cut train, we have the Tactile Knife Co. Maverick. This one has sort of a crossbar lock, and what I love about Tactile, in fact, I have a Tactile turn pen right here, is when they, they say Tactile, they mean it. Everything about this, you can feel very nicely. So the click of the blade, or in the pen case, the click of the pen has a nice solid click to it, but also the texturing on it. They do such a good job of milling a texture. Here, listen to this. You can hear my fingernails scraping through all the different grooves. So it's not gonna shred your pocket, but in the hand, it is rock solid. It's not going anywhere, it's not sliding around. A fairly slim Magna Cut blade, just excellent work all the way around Tactile Knife Co. So it's about the eight and a half, 8.2 inches overall. So a, a good size, a good everyday carry size, maybe a bit big. I think a mini Maverick could be really cool. These go for 279, very nicely done. Next up, we have the MKM Miura. Miura, I'm not sure how to say that, but this one I think is a very fascinating knife. So it has a very lot, like wide open construction here, but this is an integral. And integral button locks are quite the chore to make, I can only imagine, because you have to embed a spring in here and you do not have much space. So I don't know how they did it, but they did a very good job with this one. M390 blade, integral titanium handles with very nice jimping, knurling, etc., all the way around. It's gonna be easy on the pocket, very comfortable in the hand, but a very, very premium knife. And what I think it is, is it's just the Italians showing off how good they are at machining things. The pocket clip is just right, the handle's just right, the blade is a great usable shape, and it's a very slim, everyday carryable size. Nobody's gonna feel burdened by this, but it is a very, very nice knife. And it's going for 339, and that's getting you the 2.875 inch blade with 6.5 inches overall, M390 blade, titanium integral. Honestly, not a crazy price when you look at all the machining and craziness that goes into this knife. Next up, new from Kershaw, we have the Livewire. This one's a Magna Cut blade with the gray G10 handle, excuse me, the gray aluminum handles. And uh, we haven't talked about the Livewire much on this new knives show. It's very, very good. The action is super easy to run. The handle feels just right. The pocket clip tucks away in your hand very nicely when you're using it. It's a usable spear point blade shape, nice precise tip, and they're using Magna Cut. And for 229, like for like for OTFs, that's a very competitive price. And there's a, there's not a lot out there that is really aiming straight at that, like 200 or slightly above price point in the USA made OTF territory. And the live wire just kills it. And I'm liking to see all the new colors. We have the black one that came out originally, but now we have a green one, a blue one, and now this gray one. I think I like the black one or the gray, the green one the most. We have gray and that's the new one, so it's in new knives. Next up from Kaiser, we have the Huntsman. Not Huntsman, Huntsmen. And just look at this knife for a minute. 
got to be one of the most bizarre looking knives I've ever seen, but also one of the most comfortable. The handle, the way it flares out here in the back, it just fits in the hand just right and pushes the blade forward. And then you have really easy access to that secondary tip that you get on a Tanto. But then you get a lot of belly up here. So if I were gonna skin with a Tanto, which I imagine would be a bit of a task because this tip does not like to slice instead of puncture. But I would take this one because of how much curve there is there. You could skin pretty easily with that. And then this recurve is great at like gathering fibrous things like ropes or paper or that sort of thing to make for slicing easier. So not only is it a very interesting looking knife and one that'll definitely attract some eyes and make all your friends think, dang, that's a cool knife, but it also will excel in a myriad of cutting tasks. It's a titanium frame lock with these carbon fiber inlays. You can flick it, you can use the thumb stud, milled, milled titanium pocket clip with internal hardware as well, so screws aren't gonna back out on you or anything. Very nicely done and for a price. Remember, S35VN, carbon fiber, titanium for 189. Oh, also it's a four inch blade, so it's a big knife too. 189, I imagine that just the materials would cost mostly that. I don't know how they're reaching these prices, but very well done, Kaiser. Next up, new from Spyderco, we have one knife I'm very excited for, is the Tenacious with the M4 blade steel and the brown, Coyote Brown G10 handles. So we've talked about the Tenacious, so I won't go on for too long about it. It's a great knife, 3.5 inch blade, 7.7 .7 inch overall, a great everyday carry size, hard user, but now we have it with the super tough, high edge retention carbon steel CPM M4. One of my favorite blade steels of all time. A very, very great knife, and it's going for 133. So in that same light, I mean, you might have to save your pennies for a little bit, but it's a very accessible price point in the wheelhouse of a lot of people, and you're getting a steel and a knife that will stand up for the rest of your life without any trouble at all from Spider Co. And lastly, for $229.95, we have released today, the highly anticipated Leatherman Arc. So we all remember a few years ago when the Leatherman Free series came out and it was great because you could get to everything in it. So if I have this, I say I just pulled it out of my pocket on that pocket clip and Roman, pick a tool. You want a bottle opener? All right, I'm gonna put this hand behind my back. I'm gonna go here and I picked the wrong side. There's your bottle opener. Crack a cold one, one-handed. Up. Oh, so you want a knife? Up. Oh, there it is, one-handed. Go ahead and close it. Say so you want some pliers? There it is, one-handed. Everything about this knife, it's a multi-tool, can be operated one-handed. And that was the appeal of the free series. But Leatherman is always doing their market research, always asking people what they want. And this is the updated model. And it has a few things. So one of the big things it has is it has Leatherman's exchangeable bit system here. So you can pull this out, you can swap it around. You have the flat, you have the Phillips, et cetera. And then on this side, you have the little one as well. Glasses wearers like me really appreciate that. It's got a nice awl for scraping and puncturing and that sort of thing. It's got a file instead of a serrated blade. It's still got the scissors, but the big elephant in the room is a magna cut blade. One of my gripes about multi-tools is very seldom, in fact, I think only Leatherman does this, do they upgrade their blade steels? A lot of people are like, I don't need to carry a knife, I'll carry a Leatherman too. I'll carry a Leatherman instead. And my thought is, well, do you want edge retention? Do you want toughness? Do you want corrosion resistance? Like, what are the things that you want out of your blade? I'm a knife nerd, I need a good... Anyway, complain about it all you want. Leatherman has you covered because on the Charge TTI, you can get S30V, but here you can get the Magna Cut, the DLC coat, and a thumb stud opener. And also, the other big difference is the accents of the DLC coating on the back liners. Very nicely done, Leatherman. And the tool about this that I wanted the most because I always carry a knife. So the Magna Cut is great and I would love to carry it. However, I also have another nice blade in my pocket. But the thing that I find I want to use my Leatherman for the most, because I carry a Leatherman wave every day, is when it comes to tapping something that I can't just push with my hand, like a little nail or something like tapping my bumper back into place because I drive an old cruster. And I'll use this and it it does not want to impact very well. Like things want to get in between the layers and all that. But Leatherman Arc, 
has a nice strike surface right there. So you bet your bottom dollar I'm getting a Leatherman Arc. It is such a cool multi-tool and it's, in my opinion, going to be a game changer and an industry standard from, for the rest of its existence. Anyway, that's what we got for new knives for today. Hope you found something you like. This Leatherman Arc drops today. If it sells out, which it probably will, knowing how good it is, worry not. It is not a limited run. It will be back. But other than that, hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time.